Okay, so we're going to start eventually using color on your neurographic art. And you'll do that once you have shown me that you've put all of the pooling effect where the lines um, intersect. Right? Remember where the lines intersect like this, right? you're supposed to create kind of like a pooling of your uh, marker in those areas. Now you're going to start using colored pencils. The colored pencils I have are on the back counter. They uh, come in a set like this. Please don't mix them all up. So you'll see that the cover looks like this, polycolor. Um, they're okay. They're not the best color pencils. As we get further into um, this class, you'll get different um, color pencils to use periodically. But these are going to be the general Art One color pencils for the first few weeks. I have chosen uh, my color harmony to be complementary colors, which you haven't learned about color harmonies yet, but you will. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw that language out there. So complementary colors. It's spelled with an E in the middle, not an I. So it's not like, hey, you're looking nice today. That's complementary with an I in the middle, right? And complementary with an E, C-O-M-P-L-E-N-T-A-R-Y, is something that provides balance. Um, so they are directly across from each other on the color wheel, which you will learn, but red and green complement each other, which means when they are mixed together, like I did here, where red and green were put together, it makes the green less intense. So you're going to learn all about that uh, in subsequent uh, assignment, which will be your first module. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you about how I expect you to use color pencils. I do not expect you to go in there and color super hard. I'm not going to give you tons of instruction about it, though, because I want to see what you're capable of doing without me micromanaging everything you do. That said, I do want to help you a little bit, right? So as you see, I have red over here. I'm going to put a little red over here because by putting my colors, um, repeating my colors across the the whole of the piece, it's going to bring the eye from one red to another. So I'm going to do my color pencil in layers. You can see I just did a light layer and you can see that I'm holding my color pencil pretty far back. I'm not like choking up on it like a bat, you know. I'm holding it pretty far back so I can use more of the point. These points are achieved using handheld sharpeners, not my electric sharpeners. We never, ever, ever put a color pencil in an electric pencil sharpener. It is not only bad for the color pencil eats them up, it is horrible for the electric pencil sharpener. And I don't feel like replacing those over and over again because kids don't listen. So please, there are handheld sharpeners in the cabinet that says color pencils on a blue sign over underneath the You're Off Line poster. Go there. There are handheld sharpeners right there on the bottom shelf. So help yourself to those. Um, but in order for me to get a more intense red, I am just going to add layers and I'm coloring in little circles, right? I'm adding color using small mark making skill or strategies and I'm just going to layer those colors to get the color to be more intense without it getting too shiny right away, right? We don't, we want to avoid really reflective um, color and since these are made with wax you're going to put a lot of wax on the paper when you're adding uh, color pencil with a lot of pressure and that's going to create a glare so that when the you take a photograph or when you're hanging them up they're going to be really reflective and that's not what we want so you can see how I got a nice intense red by doing like four four layers there if I want to change that color a little bit make it a little bit more of a red orange which I think might be nice I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to take a little orange and go right over the top and that's just going to um, just take that red and change it just a little bit to make it a more ready orange. Since I have my red over here, now I got my red orange over here, but it's not super red orange because I didn't just use the red orange pencil, I used the red and the orange. I have green here. I can you know, go ahead and do a green over here, add some blue to my green or add some yellow to my green to make a yellow green, whatever you want to do. But what I want you to um, really focus on is controlling your color pencil and using it correctly, not using the point to um, get in there and color really hard and, and uh, right, get bare down on it. We don't want to do that. It eats up your pencils. It also makes your art look less than lovely. 
So uh, I'm just going to go in here. I have a fairly large set of green, or part of green over here where I've transitioned from a, a more intense green to a less intense green across this sphere. I'm just going to go ahead here and put in a little bit of green on this little sphere over here, a little circle over here. It's not really a sphere because it's not three-dimensional. It's just a shape, but this little circle over here, I'm just going to go ahead and put in my color to make it green. And I can choose to go ahead and go in again to get rid of some of that white that speckles through or I can choose to leave that white speckling through um, and that just creates a more of a lighter green there so you're just going to go through and you just use you know whatever knowledge you already possess about color and if that's really limited or you don't really think about color that much that's fine just try to make your work pleasing to the eye your eye is the one that matters the most for this right um, if you want them, your colors to be really intense, remember just use subsequent layers. Don't get in there and just bear down and try to make this as dark as possible. Um, or not, it's actually not dark. Um, as intense as possible, right? Because we're not making our colors darker when we add pressure. And you can add pressure. I just don't want you going in there right away and going crazy with it. Because pressure does make a more intense color because you're putting more of the color on the paper when you press harder, right? We're getting a, a thicker layer of my yellow green than I have my regular green there. So it makes it more intense. Those changes in intensity can be really, really beautiful. So I'm just saying you don't want to go in there right away and press really hard immediately because that's going to get a really reflective surface. So you can come in here and I said I'm choking up a little bit here because I need a little bit more control in this area a little tighter and then I can come in and you can see I'm pressing just a little bit harder here because I am going to go really intense but I'm not pressing so hard I'm going to break the point of my pencil or make my color really really shiny so you just go in add the colors that you like and think about balancing it out by repeating colors or, you know but also by uh, if I make an area where it's only one section of let's say I put yellow somewhere and it's the only place I put yellow understanding that that's going to be the place where the eye goes first it's going to create what we call focal point by emphasizing that it's different it will make our eyes go there first so if this was the only place I use this blue and everywhere else is duplicated colors, that would be the first place my eye would go. Anyway, I don't want to keep you too long with this video, but this is here uh, for you to be able to manage the color pencils on your own and work at your own pace. It's the start of what we're doing with this model of teaching, and I'll be walking around helping you out and trying to lend a hand where needed or give you some advice if you want it or just admiring what you're putting together on your paper.